Good morning and welcome to Business Growth 2.0, how to avoid the top 10 mistakes that kill small business. Hey, welcome to our webinar today. Uh, if you're online already, please uh, chime in and let me know where you are. If this is an international web conference. I'd like to see where you are, what state, country, city. Uh, so shoot that over to me uh, while we're waiting for other people to finish signing in. Great. Thank you, Jim. Good to see that. Thank you. Larry, excellent. Ian, Ethan, sorry. Great. Thank you. It's good to see everybody showing up. Let's go ahead and get started. It's 11.04 and we'll start moving through the material. Yeah. Well, I'm the guy talking to you, Scott Reed, business attorney and advisor. And if you're like me and you're on a webinar or at a presentation, you want to know who is this guy and why should I listen to him? Well, uh, I'm a husband. Uh, this is my wife, BB. We've been married for 24 years. She's the a COO of our house, of the home base. She's my wife. Uh, she's a mother, a teacher, uh, and many, many other things. Um, I've also got two boys that I think they're international spies. Uh, they keep us pretty busy. And then I'm a charity 5K specialist, and uh, to prove I'm crazy, I ran a half marathon this July. That was my first one, and that's my 16-year-old there with me. It was a great time in the heat in South Texas. Um, I'm also a three-time Hotter Than Hell 100 finisher, so that puts the ice on the cake. I am definitely crazy, right? To prove I'm a, I am stable, I did graduate from the University of Oklahoma College of Law in 1996 with a Juris Doctorate degree, and then was licensed by the State Bar of Texas in 1996, in November to be exact, uh, and have been practicing law ever since. Uh, I'm the Zig Ziglar number one small business attorney. That's Tom Ziglar, the proud son of Zig, uh, with me at a conference in Dallas. Uh, and then I'm also the exclusive small business lawyer for the Howard Partridge Inner Circle. Uh, that's Howard. Say hi, Howard. Well, uh, I established Reblaw in 2005, and I am the CEO and senior attorney at the firm. I'm also the advisor to the most interesting man in the world. Eh, not really. I just thought it might be funny. So, my credentials again, I'm the official small business attorney for Zig Ziglar Incorporated. I'm the exclusive business lawyer for the Howard Partridge Inner Circle. I have a Juris Doctorate from the University of Oklahoma. I'm licensed by the State Bar of Texas. I have 19 years of advising small business owners. I'm the founder of Reblaw and of Different in a Day uh, LLC, which is our seminar company. Okay. We work with clients who've been featured on ABC, CBS, NBC, New York Times, The Washington Post. Maybe you haven't been featured there. Maybe you don't care to be. Um, but I want you to know that we work with people who are high profile and who's, uh, who are very particular about their legal services and that everything has to be right because they have a lot of risk. My mission is to help entrepreneurs create and grow businesses that produce Profits that will last. Profits that will last. It's the will last part that's really important today. How do I accomplish that mission? Well, I provide entrepreneurs with access to excellent business and legal information and services through my access to general counsel and coaching program. Our experience, we offer a 27 years of business and legal experience. We've been serving North Texas as Reblaw for 10 plus years. We now have two locations to serve our clients in Texas, Denton and in Dallas. Our education, well, we were hardest to stay on the cutting edge of our industry in the legal way. I do uh, my continuing education hours every year. And on top of that, I'm a member of the Inner Circle, a small business coaching group uh, run by Phenomenal Products out of Houston uh, in conjunction with Dick Ziegler's company. And I meet quarterly with them, have coaching meetings weekly, and webcast until I can stay on the cutting edge of sales, marketing, leadership, all that stuff, so that I can then pass it on to my members. Systems, it's our goal to provide the most outstanding service experience ever. So we will treat you with the utmost of respect and courtesy and deliver your services on time. We deliver outstanding service by offering state-of-the-art technology, such as web conferencing, 
SMS messaging, Skype meetings, online support portal tickets, and of course, webinars. Our guarantee, if you're not completely thrilled with the service experience you receive from Revlaw, we will make it right at no charge and no obligation to you. Let's hear from you. Now, as we kind of go through this, we have all you, everyone logged in. What business are you in? So just type in your business. Let me see it. Let me see it. Okay, great. An orthodontist, that's cool. Carpet, carpet cleaning. Home restoration, okay. How, home builder, excellent. IT professional, very cool. Thank you, thank you. Okay, well that's great. So we all know what business we're in. Here's the bigger question. Why are you in business? Howard Partridge says that your business exists for one reason and one reason only, as a vehicle to help you achieve your life goals. So we got to know where we're going. So you have to have your goals, and then we need to use our business to achieve those. On today's free webinar, we're going to teach you 10 common mistakes made by small business that can kill a small business. We'll teach you why it's important to avoid these mistakes, and we're going to teach you a new and powerful way to avoid these mistakes. If you're a business owner, you want a team. Even if you're a solopreneur, you really want a team. And that team may be made up of strategic partners, uh, vendors, uh, different people that help you do what you do. You need them to be targeted. You need them to know where you're going and what you're trying to do. You need them energized and enthused about where you're going, about your mission. You need them to be achievement oriented. You need them to have the prize in mind and you need a machine. You need your business to run without you. The end goal is to have a business that doesn't require you to work every day. Otherwise, then we have a J-O-B. And we don't want jobs, we want businesses. So we have to create a team, a targeted, energized, achievement machine that will move uh, even if we're on vacation uh, in Hawaii. Okay? Well, I've got some bad news for you. You have a blind side. You don't know it, but you've got one. 15 million lawsuits will be filed this year in the state courts in the United States. 15 million. That's one every two seconds. Two out of three American businesses were sued in 2011. In fact, wage and hour lawsuits have jumped 432% in the last 20 years. What's a wage and hour suit? Well, that's about overtime and pay scales. 432%. Does anyone have a full-time employee? Ever have them work over 40 hours and not pay them? Well, you're at risk. It's a huge problem. The median cost of a business lawsuit is $54,000. Now again, that's the median cost. It can be much more expensive. It can also be less expensive. But that's the median cost. That's incredible. How many of you are ready to spend $54,000 defending yourself in a lawsuit? I'm not. So what do we do? Go to the drawing board, right? How do we, how do we protect ourselves? Well, let's talk about the 10 mistakes that will kill a small business. If you have all your eggs in one basket, all your assets, your windfall, your cash, your, your inheritance, your family, your savings, and no entity or a wrong entity, you're in trouble. The days of mom and pop shops running the sole proprietorships is over. If you're in business and it's not a hobby, it's a business, you need to have a legal entity around you. A legal entity would be a corporation or an LLC. Either one will do. I kind of favor the LLC. I think it's a simpler entity to operate and run, and it's more flexible. But you need one or the other. And what it does for you is it puts insulation around your business. It insulates your personal life from your business and your business from your personal life. It separates the two. So if something goes wrong with your business, it doesn't. no one can go home and take 
the hard-earned profits and things that you've saved and things that you've purchased, the assets that you've been able to accumulate. Because after all, that's what we're trying to do is take money out of our businesses, take it home, and do things for uh, our families. The second mistake uh, that people make is that they have no or poorly drafted shareholder agreements. So if you're a corporation, uh, then you would have a shareholder's agreement. If you're an LLC, you would have an owner's agreement or an operating agreement. It's kind of the same thing. But you ha you need one that's drafted uh, carefully. You don't want one that you've just pulled down off the Internet or, even worse, not have one at all. And then when you have one, you need to know what's in it and you need to operate your company accordingly. If you're the only member or owner of your company, it's still important to have that agreement in place because someday you might want to sell your company and we need to be able to demonstrate that you've followed your agreement and done things according to the book. And then maybe you can even sell this entity that we've created. Okay, so make sure you've got an agreement and that it's drafted well. The next biggest mistake is misunderstanding the ownership of creative assets. Okay, that's Tesla and Edison. Everyone knows about those guys, right? Light bulbs and electricity. Well, Tesla actually worked for Edison for a few months. Edison didn't care for uh, the idea that Tesla had at the time, and so Tesla moved on. Uh, so there could have been a controversy about who owned the ideas that Tesla created. And, there, and now, in her litigious society, they were almost for certain uh, be litigation between the two. So you need to make it very clear when someone's working for you, either as an employee, an independent contractor, or, or vendor, who owns what's being created. Is someone creating a new marketing plan for you? Is someone creating your website? Is someone creating uh, brochures for you? Or is someone inventing a new way to do what you do? You need to have it clearly in writing who owns the work product of your contractors, employees, and vendors. It needs to be clear because that creation is the fuel of your business. So mistake number three, again, is misunderstanding the ownership of your creative assets, your intellectual property. Mistake number four, failing to implement firm accurate HR policies. The Donald had it down, right? You are fired. It was really simple. He didn't have to document it. We all saw it on TV. Well, in the real world, you've got to have HR policies. Uh, they need to be firm. They need to be accurate, and they need to be followed so that you can make sure that if you have to fire someone, you can back it up, uh, whether they were to sue you for discrimination, for wrongful termination, uh, if they would make an unemployment claim. We need to be able to show the policies that we have, that the employee didn't follow the policies, uh, and that we followed them in letting them go. So that's a huge mistake that business owners make. Because one, it costs them because it increases their unemployment insurance rate. And two, it sets them up for litigation with uh, disgruntled former employees. Because it wasn't clear, it wasn't firm, and it wasn't implemented accurately. So the biggest mistake, number four, that kills small businesses is failing to implement firm, accurate HR policies. Okay? Mistake number five, unclear expectations and rules for employees. Okay, you need to make it clear what, their, what, what is their job. Do they have a job description? Are they measured by it? Are they evaluated regularly? And do they have a procedure manual uh, and policy manual that tells them how to do their job the way you want it done? Again, so that you can tell them whether they've met the goal, or they've fallen short, and this is why they're being disciplined, or this is why they're being fired. Huge area, big mistake, killer for small business. Mistake number six, not having clear written agreements. It causes chaos, confusion, doubt. Unclear written agreements are ambiguous, and eventually a court will try to figure out what you meant, and it may not be the way you wanted it read. So we need to have written agreements and we need them to be clear. 
We're not doing handshake deals. We're doing written agreements that are clear, concise, protect our interests. They need to be friendly so that people will sign them and do business with us. Um, but they've got to be written and they have to be clear because otherwise you spend tens of thousands of dollars uh, trying to prove what the agreement meant. And one side or the other is going to end up very unhappy in that in that lawsuit. So you can solve a lot of problems, get rid of chaos and doubt and turmoil by having clear written agreements. Not having them, it's a killer. Number seven, trying to handle disputes on your own. You would be amazed at the number of small business owners that think that they can uh, be their own lawyer. Uh, there's a famous quote that the person that represents themselves in their dispute has a fool for a lawyer and a client. And I think that's very true. And you need to leave uh, legal disputes to legal experts. Um, and just as I don't cut my own hair, do my own root canals, um, we let legal practitioners handle disputes um, and don't do that on our own. Killer mistake number eight is not using non-compete agreements. You've got a killer business. It's rocking and rolling. You're, you have high sales. Um, you've got a really cool product or service, and you've got some really good employees because you've hired superstars. And you uh, are under the impression that they're going to stay forever. Well, that's a false impression because they're not. Uh, the average length of a job now is less than three years. So people are going to come. People are going to go. You have to expect it. And so we have to have documentation uh, as we onboard them that documents that they can't take your ideas and go someplace else and use them. So they need non-compete agreements. They need non-solicitation clauses. They can't take your employees. They can't take your clients. They can't take your social media contacts. All that stuff needs to be create and protected. That is the killer. You build this whole business and then someone walks out with it. You can easily fix it. Uh, we can document it in a way that will prevent people from hurting you when they leave. Killer mistake number nine, not knowing the regulations that apply to your business. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to know your business. Not just how it works, but you've got to know the law related to your business. Well, that's really hard to do if you're not a lawyer. Uh, the regulations that have come from our, uh, our wonderful government are very voluminous and very difficult to understand. They're not written in clear language, they're in legal mumbo jumbo, so that the bureaucrats know what they say and you don't, okay? But you've got to know it. Not knowing the regulations that apply to your business will kill your business faster than anything else. Okay, mistake number 10, copyright and trademark infringement. Too many of you all are pulling the slot machine a handle and letting it fly with copyright and trademark infringement. Some of you are doing it intentionally and just hoping that you don't get caught because you're putting together beautiful marketing pieces with someone else's photographs and you haven't paid for a license. Hey, we've all done it. But stop it. Find a source of free or inexpensive photographs and buy the license and use it according to the license. Make sure that your brand uh, or brands is not infringing on someone else's trademark. That's infringement. And there are people out there trolling the internet looking for these copyright and trademark infringements. And then you get a friendly letter in the mail saying, hello, you owe me money. Send me a check for $5,000 or we're going to sue you in federal court. Guess what? There's no defense. If, you, if you've used the infringing material, even if you didn't mean to, even if your web designer did it for you, even if your receptionist did it and you didn't know it's on your material, it's infringing, you're in trouble. That can kill your business so quickly. So make sure that you're being diligent about not using other people's copyright and trademark, and I could include patent, in there. Um, they've worked hard to develop it, just like you've worked hard on your business. Um, we may not like the licensing fees, but we need to find a way to do it correctly or not use that piece of uh, 
of art or intellectual property. Okay, so kind of to recap, the 10 mistakes that will kill a small business, no shareholders agreement, a misunderstanding of ownership of creative assets, failing to implement firm accurate HR policies, unclear expectations and rules for employees, not having good written agreements, trying to handle disputes on your own, not using non-compete agreements, not knowing the regulations that apply to you, and copyright and trademark infringement, whether intentional or accidental, is a killer. Well, that's all a lot of fun. Folks, there, there are 10, those are 10, we could do 100 things that you could do every day uh, that can kill your small business. We need to shatterproof our businesses. Just like we have shatterproof glass in our car windshields, we need to have a way of making our businesses shatterproof. The good news, I'm here for you. I'm like the Knight Rider. I'm like Iron Man. I'm like Batman. Hey, lawyers don't have to be scary. But for them not to be scary, you've got to make a paradigm shift with me. All right, this is my friend Sam. Sam stands for same as me. Many of you have questions that you're not asking uh, because you're embarrassed uh, for whatever reason. If I do that, then I would call and say, I have a friend with this problem and how do we fix it? Because I didn't want to say I had the problem. Well, that's Sam. All right. So I'm not this guy, but Sam is a stressed out multitasker. He's got a hobby. He's a coach. He's a church. He's got friends. He's a father. He's a husband. He does marketing and sales and administration, networking, payroll, civic club. I left out leadership because he's got to be working with his team. I mean, Sam is stressed out. He is trying to do it all, and he can't. I'm sure that is many of you. But I can show you a way that you can be calm, cool, and collected. Like Sam, because he's implemented my systems, he's now captain of his own destiny. This looks much better, right? Well, what is a paradigm? Well, Stephen Covey compared it to lenses in our glasses. With my glasses on, I see the world differently than without my glasses. With my glasses, I can read. Things are crisp and clear. Without my glasses, things are blurry, and I can't read the book in front of me. So what, but what we see isn't a completely accurate reflection of reality. It is shaped by our attitudes and perceptions. A paradigm can become so far removed from reality that they become, or it becomes, dysfunctional. And a paradigm shift is necessary so that we can see something in a new light. And I'm telling you that the way that you've viewed law firms and legal professionals has become uh, unworkable. It's not working for your business and it's leaving you exposed. And so you need to shift with me. You ready? Let's go. Just in case you don't think you need a paradigm shift. What do you see there? Type in the question box what you see. Someone sees a duck. Anyone else see a duck? Anyone see a rabbit? Yeah, you turn the picture on its side and guess what? It goes from a duck to a rabbit, correct? That's a paradigm shift, right? Here's another one. Probably you've seen this before. Do you see an old lady or do you see a young lady? Young lady or the old lady in the big picture? Okay, let's make the paradigm shift. The traditional approach to legal services has been reactive, right? It's like the policeman reacting to you speeding. It's the ambulance coming to pick you up when you've had a wreck. Uh, it's a lawsuit when you've breached a contract, infringed on someone's trademark or copyright, 
or fired someone uh, inappropriately. And we turn red and we react. Not good, right? Reactive is bad. We want to be proactive. Five legal mistakes your business can't afford to make. Small business ahead says that the impact of litigation on businesses goes well beyond the purely financial impact of legal fees and damages. Hey, that's bad enough. But it says to avoid these adverse results, you have to be proactive in how you conduct your business from a legal perspective and don't make mistakes. Proactive. Forbes says one of the last things that's on an entrepreneur's mind when they start a company are legal issues. Unfortunately, it's exactly these types of things they say, that trip up entrepreneurs and can sink their company. See, it's not just me saying it. It's Forbes saying it. All business says, small businesses can make legal mistakes all the time, some of which can be disastrous. Got to be proactive. Knowing what pitfalls to watch out for can make all the difference. G.I. Joe used to say that knowing is half the battle. You have to know what to watch out for. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So some typical business legal emergencies would be you get sued by a disgruntled employee, you get sued by a disgruntled customer, you get a cease and desist letter uh, related to infringing behavior, your employee leaves and takes your business, or a competitor steals your intellectual property. Those are all bad things. Those are emergencies. If you hire an attorney at those times, uh, it's going to be more expensive, and you're going to have money going down the drain. You don't want to hire an attorney when you are in a crisis, just like you don't want to buy plywood in the middle of a hurricane. You want to do it before you need it, before the crisis. The right approach is access. You have to be proactive. I like to say that access equals answers. Examples of parts of his life where Sam is proactive is that Sam has car insurance. He makes sure it's paid. He makes sure he has enough coverage. He makes sure his teenage son has the right insurance. Uh, he has life insurance. He has dental care. He has health care. He uh, he's taking care of his marriage. He raises his kids intentionally. He maintains his car. He maintains his home. Sam has got that covered. He's proactive in those areas. Sam's had an epiphany. He's thinking, I can prevent legal problems before they happen. Now, you really can't do that, can you? Well, yeah. Uh, in a lot of cases, you can't. Let's talk about this access that we're talking about. Access stands for always available, creation of a corporate structure, contract review, protection of economic value of IP, shatterproof business assessment, and a shield for litigation. Okay, that's access. We call it the access plan. The key, the cornerstone of the access membership is that we are always available. You have to have a lawyer available. The gain is that when you have a legal question, you can call, text, tweet, or email me or my staff, and we answer your question. So you've got a lawyer on speed dial. That, my friends, is access. Pain. Without this access, you're stuck with bad advice from non-experts, from the guy at the coffee shop, uh, or from a colleague in your networking group who maybe has had a similar situation. The other problem is that if you do rely on the right experts, you're going to have to pay them large initial retainers and money up front to answer simple questions. Access is important. According to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, America's civil justice system is the world's most expensive, with a direct cost in 2009 of $248.1 billion. Folks, let's, let's be a part of lowering that cost. It shouldn't cost that much. Let me give you an example of a need for access. A realtor who, uh, in, our, uh, in our local area, introduced a buyer to a builder. They're going to build a custom home. So she introduced them. The builder and the buyer did a contract. The home got built. Uh, the builder does the contract. The realtor doesn't. The builder calls the realtor, says, hey, we're getting ready to close. Thank you very much for bringing me the buyer. 
and the realtor calls the closing company. And the closing company says, yep, we're closing, get us some paperwork. And she says, well, I don't have a contract. And I said, well, just go file a lien and send that over to us and we'll pay you. Sounds like great advice, right? Wrong. In the state of Texas, if you file a lien and you're a realtor and you don't have a written agreement, you have crossed the line. You have violated the law and you're gonna be subject to a $10,000 statutory penalty, plus any damages that you cost. And in this situation, the buyer lost a point on their mortgage, lost time, and sued for damages, and the realtor ended up in bankruptcy. All because they had it, did not have access to a legal professional. So they called the wrong person. They called the title company. The next thing, uh, the next component of an access plan, the C, is company structuring. It's tough to get there if you don't know where you're going and you need a vehicle to do it. So the gain of having this part, this access plan and, the, and this C is that we help you determine the proper structure for your specific business. And then we create it, we file the documents to form or fix your corporate structure, whether it's LLC or corporation. Most organizations aren't set up correctly. And by failing to be set up correctly, they could be exposing themselves with that one mistake to potential IRS problems, fines, fees, and potentially personal liability that puts your personal assets at risk. But with the C, you don't have that problem. We structure your business correctly. We monitor it, we run it right. Did you know that the torque cost per person was 808 billion in 2009? That is huge, folks. People are coming after us, and so uh, we have to have protection. I like to call those people that are following those tort claims against businesses predator creditors. It's creditors that we don't have a written legal agreement with. They're just coming after us. Predator creditors. Okay? A general contractor in business for 20 years. Better Business Bureau says they're wonderful. They've never had anything, any complaints. Uh, suddenly, they find a customer they can't make happy. Uh, they're unincorporated because they're a mom and pop shop, been in business as a family, and they get sued. Guess what? All of the stuff that they've built over the years, their real estate that they have as they're renting out, is all exposed to this lawsuit, and they have to settle to avoid the risk, all because they did not have an entity around them. The next C is the contract review and advice. We talked about having good written agreements, clear. Well, before you sign it, let us design it. Built into the access membership are contracts so that we'll draft them for you or review what you would have to sign. That way we make sure that we know the problem areas in a contract and we can do what? We can avoid disputes before they happen. You gain the assurance in knowing that what you're having your customer sign and your employee sign is enforceable. If you don't do that, you might be risking your livelihood um, and signing things that you can't enforce or that are poorly written. Let's talk about the economic value, the E, of value protecting your ideas. We do something here called the IP wheel. We take all of our access members through the intellectual property wheel, and we basically figure out everything that you're creating in your business that would be considered intellectual property. We inventory it. We tell you how you can protect it. We let you prioritize it. We price it, and then you start pulling the trigger on the different things that you need to have protected. And this way you have a systematic, organized way of keeping track of your intellectual property and making sure that no one's hurting you. You recognize these brands and they're super important. Your brand is too. Again, the gain by having the access plan is that you have an IP wheel. We'll do a trademark name search for you to make sure that your brand isn't being used by someone else. We'll do a cease and desist letter if someone is infringing and we've had to do two in the last two weeks uh, for access members. The downside, the pain to not having the, the E side of the access plan is that all your hours of blood, sweat, and tears and years 
uh, could be wasted because someone else could be building their business on your brand, or you could be building your business on someone else's brand. You need to know. According to the SBA, registering your business name is a key step to legally operating your business and potentially obtaining financial aid from the government. So if you're ever looking for an SBA loan, it's important that you've trademarked what, you have, what your brand is. They're looking for that kind of activity from entrepreneurs. Okay, so the first S, shatterproof business assessment. You folks, you need a report card, and that's what we do with our access members is we take them through their business and basically give them a report card so they know where they stand. Okay, we look at your business structure, your business conduct, uh, any litigation you might be involved in and risk for it. We look at your, we'll look at your insurance policies. We'll look at your employees, your manuals, your policies. We'll look at other contracts and agreements that you may be using, uh, even for equipment. Okay? That's how we do our business assessment. Doesn't take a long time to do, but it can be very insightful. And then we start trying to work on those issues so that when we do it again in the next year, that we've improved. The pain is that you may not know that you're building your business on sand. Uh, if you build your business on sand, we know what happens, right? It's going to shift. It's going to be toppled down. It can be easily blown over. Well, we don't want that. We want to build on solid ground. And when we know that one third of all businesses in the U.S. were sued in 2011, it's not if, it's when. So we have to have that solid foundation. We need to have a report card on our business. The last S is a shield. It's a shield for litigation. Folks, you're, like we said, it's, it's going to happen. You're going to get sued, so you might as well plan for it. Again, it's not if, it's when. It's a matter of time if you're doing enough business. So with the Access membership, you get pre-litigation services. Uh, you get demand letters. You get responses to demand letters, and uh, we'll negotiate those claims for you because you'd be amazed how well we can do. The pain is that if you don't have it, legal bills can mount up quickly. And many disputes can be resolved with a phone call, letter, a couple of discussions with the other party or their attorney, um, and save you money and time by resolving the dispute. If you don't have the plan, then you have to go hire a lawyer to do that, pay them a large retainer, and then move forward. Interesting fact, did you know that three quarters of all business owners in America are concerned they might be the target of a frivolous or unfair lawsuit? In fact, six out of 10 say that they're afraid of lawsuits and it makes them feel constrained in making business decisions. 54% say that lawsuits or the threat of lawsuits force them to make decisions they otherwise would not have made. That's high. Here's an example for you of why you need this shield. A disgruntled customer of a company, uh, of a small construction company gets upset. So they go on Google to find their lawyer, because where everyone goes to find a lawyer. And then they call the lawyer. They meet with the lawyer a few days later. Um, he asks for a large consultation fee for his time. And then he asks for a retainer. Uh, the lawyer makes a phone call to the other side and resolves the case. The phone call just costs you $2,500. Well, with the access membership, you don't have to risk that. I mean, this is a huge value. Okay? So kind of review access membership and being proactive. You need, you need a lawyer available. You need someone to help you with your company structure. You need someone to give you contract review and advice. You need to be concerned about the economic value of intellectual property. And you need to have a shadowproof business assessment. We want things to hit our windshield. Crack it, mark it, but not come through and hit us in the face. And then you need a shield that will handle uh, threats of litigation and litigation on the you know, pre-litigation pre side so we can resolve disputes early. I want to thank you guys for being with me today. Um, and for being here, uh, I want to offer a free strategy session. And as a bonus, if you book the strategy session today, then you'll receive a free copy of my ebook, Eight Questions to Eliminate Signer's Remorse. With this book, you'll be able to sign contracts with confidence, 
and you'll learn how to apply these strategies in your organization. So to get your free strategy session, you just have to go to that URL that's on the screen. And to make it a little easier, I'm going to type it in for you, and we'll send it to all. So you all should be seeing that there, and you should be able to cut and paste, and uh, go to that landing page, type in your information, book your free strategy session, and uh, let's get you on the way to shatterproofing your business and make sure that you aren't making those 10 killer mistakes. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. It was, uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on our next Business Grow 2.0.